Omar's store in Colonial Heights. Most of the injured from the Petersburg Colonial Heights area are being taken to hospitals throughout the Richmond area. One of those hospitals is Med the Medical College of Virginia Major Trauma Center, where we join Brenda Hughes now for another update. Brenda. Yeah, Gene and Sabrina, things have calmed down a bit here uh, uh, in contrast to some other areas in Southside. Carol Dunlap joins us. Carol, tell us, uh, you're, you're with MCV Public Relations. Tell me what you know about how many victims are, are here, and I understand you do have some on the way. Yes. Um, the most recent count I have is we have five people here. We have one on the way from John Randolph, a transfer, and that one from Randolph is actually our only Walmart patient. The rest are from motor, motor vehicle accidents that occurred around the area. We've been talking about, uh, we had been given information that the victims who were here, basically minor injuries in stable condition. Now, you said that the ones on the on the way, though, what type of injuries do they have? Right. Um, we may be getting um, a he person with a head injury and perhaps one with a uh, crushed pelvis. Okay, thanks, Carol. We understand that uh, uh, they are not expecting to find any more pockets of people. I believe, Carol, you told me that. So that so definitely uh, things, the, the worst could be over here. Also, John Randolph and Southside Regional certainly have more patients there. They are under control, and they are accepting any more victims that uh, should come out of this uh, tornado. Jean Sabrina. All right, Brenda Hughes, Carol Dunlop, thank you for that update. We're also told that several people, including a pregnant woman, were taken to the Chippenham Medical Center. We are told that the injuries were not serious, so they're going to be all right. The devastation of today's tornado is being felt by everyone in Old Town, Petersburg. Most of the buildings in that section date back before the Civil War. City officials say damage estimates will exceed the $10 million mark. Our reporter Ed Scarborough, who lives right in the midst of it and his place survived, is uh, on location for a first-hand look. Ed, have you been able to get to your house to, to s assess the damage? Yes, I have. It's, uh, it's, it's nothing short of miraculous, I, and I don't know why, but nothing at my house was touched. Um, the windows, not a broken window. Um, but I can tell you that I'm certainly one of the, probably the luckiest people in Old Town, right across the street from me. Buildings sheared off, uh, the entire top floor is taken away, roofs sheared off, uh, windows broken. Um, I'd like, to take, I'd like you to take a look at this. This is uh, this here, uh, an 1840 structure uh, townhouse, and this is what's left of the chimney, blown right down in the, in the street. Um, this is the kind of stuff you're seeing all over Old Town, and as you go down further into Old Town, the devastation is even worse. Um, it's, it's important to point out that uh, the city officials and emergency crews have done such a good job today in responding to this. Um, it really is amazing that Petersburg has the ability to pull together at a time like this, and everybody works together. I'd like to bring the city manager, Valerie Lemmy, over right now. Valerie, you, not only being a city official here, you were also part and in, in, took part in this disaster, so to speak. What's your story? Well, I was in the Art League building when the tornado came over, and it started to shake. The building, the roof, uh, we thought maybe it was just collapsing. Uh, a few minutes, it did not take long. This destruction happened in just a very few minutes. Uh, the building I was in is totally demolished, as is my car, which was out front. The South Side Station is totally demolished. The French Betsy, the Appomattox Iron Road works. Our downtown, the Old Town section, has for the most part either been demolished or the buildings have had severe structural Damage. Very quickly, made a request to state police for what? We are trying to get in contact with the governor to ask him to declare an official state of an emergency. We have declared one. I have done that for the city of Petersburg. Okay, thank you very much. Valerie Lemmy, city manager of Petersburg. Damage here in excess of $10 million. That's what they're estimating right now, and that's just the beginning. Back to you. A lucky lady to have been in a building that was demolished uh, by the tornado. Uh, so you. many lucky people here, so few injuries at this point. Thank and you, Ed Scarborough. A lot of unlucky people as well. It appears most of the dangerous storms have passed through our area now. Meteorologist Jason Laney has been tracking the storms all afternoon. Jason, uh, is the worst now over? Well, can we expect a calm evening? Well, uh, basically we can here, Sabrina. I have to uh, make sure our audio is working right here, though. Uh, we still have a tornado watch in effect until 8 o'clock or so tonight. That does include the city of Richmond, although most of the action is well east of here now, and there's nothing to our west at all to show up. We've got our local radar on the weather computer right now, and if we'll be able to bring that up, there it is. You can see one last line of thunderstorms. This developed in the last hour, stretching across parts of Greensville County and to Southampton County, and just to the north of the Hampton Road. 
Roads area. That should be the end of the thunderstorms. As a matter of fact, improving weather expected during the next several hours. All right, we hope uh, it'll last several days. Thank you, Jason. The tornado spawned by the storm sent a wall of water over the deck of the Verina Enon Bridge. Now, the deck of that bridge is hundreds of feet above the river, but a twister sucked up thousands of gallons of water, according to witnesses, for a few terrifying seconds and threw a wall of water across the bridge. The water knocked four tractor trailers onto their sides. One turned over truck was rammed by a fifth rig. Police say there was only one serious injury in all of that. The bridge reopened to traffic in both directions late this afternoon. Ooh, the fury of Mother mm. Nature. Coming up, we're going to get the other news of the day, including the latest on VMI's all-male admissions policy after a meeting of board members today in Richmond. And we'll have the latest in the death of a Richmond woman after police raided her home looking for drugs. These stories and more after these messages. Days, huh? Yeah, all I want to do is take my shoes off, sit on my couch, and watch a movie. Only Blockbuster has so many movies, so many ways to turn one of those days into a Blockbuster night. Your movie's My Rocky Road? I'll take a rain check. Last chance for dessert. I'll owe you one. So pick up a movie from Blockbuster and make it a Blockbuster night. Right now, this seven-piece gift is yours free with any Estee Lauder purchase of $15 or more. Through August 21st, exclusively at participating Leggett stores. Look inside a Virginia travel guide, and you'll see our beautiful Blue Ridge Mountains, Shenandoah Valley, our wide windswept beaches, Mount Vernon and Colonial Williamsburg. But there are places in Virginia not found in any travel guide, like the First Baptist Church of Hamburg. And friends, there you will find something very close to heaven. The year 2018. Our planet, struggling to survive, turns to a vast and mysterious frontier. A sea of hope right here on Earth. Beneath the surface lies the future. SeaQuest, this fall on NBC. Now you kids play outside and, and don't leave the backyard. Are you missing out on all that Richmond has to offer? Make August the time to discover Richmond's museums. All month long, use your Richmond Times Dispatch Press Pass for half price admission to over 20 museums, cultural attractions, and historic sites right here at home. Look for details in the Times-Dispatch and discover Richmond's museums. They're right in your own backyard. <laughs> the Board of Visitors of Virginia Military Institute gathered for a crucial strategy session today in Richmond. The board met behind closed doors to discuss admitting women. The Fourth U.S. Circuit Court of Appeals says VMI can keep its male-only admissions policy if the state establishes a similar school for women or if VMI goes private. On Monday, U.S. District Judge Jackson Kaiser is expected to rule on the U.S. Justice Department's request that he order VMI to admit women. VMI board members had no comment today on what their next move might be. Drugs were found inside the Jackson Ward home where a 53-year-old grandmother died of a heart attack after narcotics officers broke into her home on a search for drugs. An official inventory of items confiscated was filed in Richmond Circuit Court today. Police have said all along that Barbara Lewis was not the target of the drug raid. A source tells 12 News that police were after her 19-year-old son, Jason. Diane Walker reports. Drug contraband was found during the police search of 408 West Clay Street Wednesday night. The search warrant shows what was confiscated. It does not reveal the amount. Razor blade, cocaine, Motorola pager, miscellaneous papers. They say cocaine was in the house. That's not true? That's not true. Tyrone Lewis claims police are creating a diversion, allegedly to cover up missteps that he says contributed to his mother's death. 
53-year-old Barbara Lewis was stricken with breathing problems as police used a battering ram to force open her door. She later died of a heart attack. The Lewis's 19-year-old son, Jason, admits that he was arrested twice in July on felony drug charges. He says he will be cleared. Tyrone Lewis says Jason's troubles are unrelated to how his mother died. He wants the officers brought up on murder charges. I know they have a conscience. It's got to be eating them up. She's a, a respectable lady. Everybody loved her, including her family. Her family really loved her. Everybody loved her. She worked hard. The tragic chain of events that happened here did affect police officers who executed the search warrant. A post-trauma debriefing was held the same evening to help police officers deal with Barbara Lewis's death. Diane Walker, Channel 12 News. No arrest was made as a result of the police raid. The Lewises are in consultation with an attorney. Mm. We got much more than we bargained for today with the weather. A deadly tornado was uh, quite a shock. It certainly was. Meteorologist Jason Laney will join us with a look at what we can expect tomorrow. Our low is lower. In a recent price comparison on health and beauty items between Winn-Dixie and Walmart, Winn-Dixie's total was $99.38. Walmart's total was $115.67. These were our everyday prices, not a sale. The result? Winn-Dixie was 14% lower than Walmart. 14% lower. Winn-Dixie has lower health and beauty prices. Lower. Shop Winn-Dixie, the low price leader. It is the first element of creation. Nothing brings it more elegantly or shapes it more beautifully than Anderson windows and patio doors. Come, live in the light of Anderson windows. Come home to Anderson. Here's one time it doesn't matter who your neighbor is. Here's the other. Life's too short. Stop the hate. His gang's latest victim, his own mother. I don't know nothing. Do it. Let's wander like hell you don't. Mancuso must help him make the right choice. NBC Tonight. Then TV Guide says Lucky Chances has all the sex, greed, glamour, and power you'd expect. You want to make a baby? And Us Magazine says it's hot, it's steamy, it's out of control. Bring the champagne. It's the television event of the summer. I'm going to make you very, very thirsty. Jackie Collins, Lucky Chances, NBC Tonight. Our call 12 lines are open to answer your questions about the tornado. Volunteers have available information, including phone numbers you may have missed. Early in the week, we'll have information on how you can join with 12 News in helping our Petersburg neighbors through Operation Old Town. And they will need lots of help. Certainly will. Indeed. One of the worst, most severe storms this area has seen in a while. Uh, certainly since 1950 when we started actually rating these tornadoes. I showed a graphic in the last half hour showing that this could have possibly been an F4 tornado. We rate them from an F0 to an F5. Since 1950 when we started this scale, there have been no F4. Fours, there have been no F5s, and if this one had wind speeds of 200 miles an hour or greater, which it may well have from looking at some of the damage, this could be the strongest tornado to hit any part of Virginia in the last 43 years. Well, certainly things have calmed down a lot out there right now. We started the day off. Everyone was so excited. We had the rainfall. Our temperatures were cool. Everything working just like we would like to see it. 73 was the high temperature earlier today. I'll tell you, in the last few hours, we've crossed up to 74 degrees to set a new high for the date. 68 is the low for the last 24 hours. You can see the records. No records threatened in either one of those aspects. Now, rainfall totals came in at two and a half inches. A lot of rainfall. Most of that fell prior to 1 o'clock today. 
Sunset will be at 811 this evening, rising tomorrow at 618. Now, as far as the temperature is concerned, it is now 74. This is the warmest we've been all day. Of course, it's not raining now. This is one of the few times today we've missed out on the rain. Humidity is still up at 90%, but we're starting to slowly bring in some slightly cooler air. It should be a really nice weekend coming our way. We've been talking a lot, and we focused the first part of this broadcast on the big tornado that rolled through Colonial Heights. The one that I'm estimating was probably a bottom line F4 tornado. Well, it just kind of bounced along Prince George, Charles City, New Kent counties. Lots of reports, at least from the telephone so far for down in New Kent County. And this storm finally wound down as it crossed northern parts of Gloucester County, really just south of Richmond. That doesn't mean this was the only tornado. There was one that popped up about, oh, 2.30 or so in Greensville County, produced a tornado. That one went through the Tidewater area about 4 o'clock. And all along the line, there were numerous reports of funnel clouds. We even had one such report right here on the south side of Richmond from one of the Skywarn spotters for the National Weather Service. Well, here's what's happened. It's really hard to pick out the actual thunderstorms as they roll through here earlier today. But in general, that line of real active weather is now out in the Atlantic. And one last little line of thunderstorms has now popped up across extreme southeastern parts of Virginia. As we look at what's uh, lying ahead here, let's go ahead and look at some of the tornadoes. I've had so many people ask me, is this usual for us to get a tornado in Virginia this time of year? Well, uh, we don't get them that often, but they have been known to occur in all much of the year, as you can see. July is the month with the greatest number of occurrence since we've been keeping records, 43. But you see 27 in August, and uh, I guess it's time to add at least another couple to that figure. Now we'll bring you back to the satellite photograph, and we find the clouds that were responsible for this is a big low-pressure area rolled out of Tennessee. And it was right in advance of that that the destructive weather formed earlier this afternoon. The good news is that low-pressure center continues just to work on across Virginia. The rain with it's just about gone, and the drier air is moving in in a hurry. Forecast details looking like this. Still an evening thunderstorm southeast, but clearing out some after midnight. Tonight's low 68. Reverse the numbers. You've got a nice day for Saturday, a high of 86. A cool Saturday night, low down to 65, and a pretty decent day on Sunday as well. So most of the storm is now behind us, and I think the severe weather threat has uh, diminished as well. We need a break now, definitely. Okay. Thanks, Jason. Sure. Track records were shattered today in qualifying at Watkins Glen. And Ben will be along to show us who is on the pole for Sunday's race. Stay with us. In a world of 5, 50, or 500 channels, there's only one channel where you can wake up with Bryant Gumbel and Katie Couric on today. Only one channel where Tom Brokaw offers you solutions on nightly news with America Close Up. Where Jane Pauley and Stone Phillips bring you compelling stories on Dateline. And coming in August, Tom and Katie together in prime time. And that channel is NBC. From morning to night, the place to get your news. Watkins Glen, then road course. Mm -hmm. They'll be going left and right. Both so ways. It requires some skill, folks. The men of the Winston Cup circuit are at Watkins Glen for this week's Winston Cup event. In first round of qualifying this afternoon, Mark Martin had that number six Valvoline Ford dialed in. He shot at the old track record of just over 116 miles an hour with a lap of 119.118 to grab the pole for Sunday's race. Kenny Schrader driving the number 25 Cognac Chevrolet, the second fastest at 117.946 miles an hour. Here's your top five. Martin and Schrader on row one with Terry Labonte third. Lake Speed driving the number 28 Texaco Havilland Ford and Dale Earnhardt round out the top five. Rusty Wallace headlines the second five with Kyle Petty seventh. Awesome Bill, Ricky Rudd and Wally Dollenback Jr. round out the top ten. Bobby Hillen, the number 90 Holly Myers Ford qualified 17th. Just got off the phone with the folks out at Southside Speedway, and yes, they are planning to run this evening's McGuire Motors 100. Practice has been going on since about 5 o'clock this afternoon. Now, qualifying could be a problem. Some of the cars were delayed arriving at the track because of the traffic problems along 95, and if qualifying is scuttled, they will line them up according to points out at Southside Speedway. But yes, as of a few minutes ago, they are planning to race. The wet weather in town washed out a lot of today's American Tennis Association's National Championship action. Some of the matches were moved indoors to Riverside and Courtside West. The juniors will begin play at 8 a.m. tomorrow morning at Bird Park. The women's open singles final is scheduled for high noon. An Indiana appeals court today upheld the rape conviction of former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson by a vote of 2-1. to one. Alan Dershowitz, Tyson's attorney, says there has been a grave injustice and he'll seek an appeal of today's ruling. 
Meanwhile, the New York Mets are denying reports that they will send Vince Coleman back in packing. Coleman took a leave of absence to deal with the charge of illegal possession of an explosive device. Coleman allegedly threw a firecracker into a crowd of fans fans outside Dodger Stadium last month. The New York Daily News is reporting the Mets will release Coleman and pay the rest of this year and next year of his $11.95 million contract. Once again, the New York Mets deny that report. In the New York Daily News, the Richmond Braves playing tonight on the road at Syracuse, and let's hope they get the win. The local team trying to do well on this road trip. Yes. They won two of three, lost last night, but they'll bounce back this Yes, time. it's going to turn Thank things around tonight. In just a moment, we will have more on today's deadly tornado. Stay with us. We here at Hardee's have a little quiz for you. What do you think of when I say New York? Right, that great tasting New York rye. And how about when I say big? Right again, Hardee's thick quarter pound burger. How about exciting? Uh-huh, sauteed onions, crisp bacon, and three kinds of cheese. Well, that's Hardee's new New York patty melt. So now when I say New York patty melt, what do you think of? Right, which leaves only one more question. Are you ready for some real food? Party! Post captioning of 12 News is provided under a grant from Chippenham Medical Center. Workers will be busy throughout the night cleaning up in the wake of a tornado that tore through Colonial Heights in Old Town Petersburg this afternoon. Reporter Ed Scarborough has an update on the situation in that part of the South City's South Side area. Ed. Sabrina, we did want to tell you that uh, we understand some, also some parts of Pocahontas Island, uh, which is adjacent to the Old Town area, were damaged, uh, on some significant damage at Roper Brothers Lumber. Uh, we had some people ask some questions about that before, wanted to get that information to them. Also wanted to say, say that, as you can see right here beside me, this is Trooper Newby from the State Police. Uh, there are quite a few uh, state police officers here on the scene, and uh, this is all to protect against looting, protect against problems, and if you think these guys don't mean business, well, they do. We just saw somebody get arrested for even being in the wrong area. If you don't have any business in this area, this is definitely not a place where you want to be. So um, very important, very important to, uh, to, to stay out of this area until officials uh, get everything under control. And uh, we, the crowds have been pretty good here so far. And just a devastating thing here today, certainly one of the biggest stories that Petersburg will remember for a long time. Um, they say that life isn't fair, and it's true. Life isn't fair, as you can see, because uh, Petersburg uh, constantly pulling itself up by its own bootstraps, and you can see what happened here today. We have to start all over again. It's too much, isn't it, Ed? It certainly is. A state of emergency in Petersburg this evening. I want to remind you that tonight at 7 o'clock, we will have a special report on the tornado that touched down in Southside Virginia today. That's we'll a half have hour from now. Live reports from our crews uh, at the scene. Good night. This has been a production of 12 News. More Central Virginians get their news from Channel 12 than any other television station.